Today is all about how to keep a fit and healthy lifestyle on the journal. I'm your host, Alex Perlo, and I hope that today's show will give you the motivation to get off the couch and to get into the gym. Now one of my most favorite dishes ever is most definitely my mom's homemade lasagna. But now, could you imagine that if the dish that you absolutely love, so for me, lasagna, could you imagine if that dish killed you? This is the kind of challenge that Chris McMaster has to worry about every day of his life. Jemiah Birchall looks into how Chris deals with his lethal allergy. My name is Chris McMaster, I'm 20 years old, and I am anaphylactically allergic to all dairy products and eggs. So I actually found out I had the allergy when I was about uh, six months old. Uh, my mom tried to feed me lasagna, and apparently like I broke out with like hives and like, my face got all red and itchy. And, and when I had the allergy, it was like my throat was slowly starting to close. So she realized like right away that it was really severe. And luckily we had Benadryl in the house, so she gave that to me. And we went to the allergist, like, I guess she took me there, like, not shortly after that. And yeah, I've had the allergy ever since then. Uh, there are quite a few alternatives that uh, Chris could look into, uh, mainly soy or almond products. Any uh, vegetable that can uh, be substituted uh, into a recipe uh, instead of a dairy product. Uh, Chris could also look into going full vegan. Uh, so removing uh, any kind of dairy and uh, egg-based products from his diet completely. So some things I can't eat that I really wish I could. Uh, I wish I could eat pizza. I wish I could eat macaroni and cheese. I wish I could eat chocolate. It'd be good. Never had chocolate. Ice cream. Um, tacos. When I go out to eat with friends, it's more so I have to make sure I read the ingredients to different restaurants. So like, so for instance, if we go to McDonald's, I know like the certain things that I've had in the past. I'll look online to see like the nutrition facts and the ingredients to all the items they sell. Um, or if we're going out for dinner, I have to always like say if it's a waiter, I have to ask what's in this or can you make sure like that you don't contaminate that because contamination is a really big thing with it. Because sometimes they cook like certain foods on the same grill, right? So like if it's a burger with cheese, and you ask for no cheese, it's still gonna be cooked on that same grill. But as, as long as Chris uh, gets the uh, right uh, vitamins, minerals, and uh, supplements that he requires uh, to sustain his life, then switching diets isn't really gonna make a huge impact. Uh, eating meat does not contain dairy. Uh, it's the recipes that you use uh, for cooking. Uh, as long as he stays away from dairy products and eggs, he should be fine. I have this brand called like Daya. They have like a like a vegan organic kind of cheese that like I, they have like a mac and cheese. They have a pizza. Um, what else do they have? Blocks of cheese. They have like a lot of different alternatives to actual food that I can't have. So for me, the severity of the allergy is very high. Um, it's not to the severity of where with peanuts. With some people who are allergic to peanuts, where they can't even be around them or watch people eat them or smell them. It's more so if I touch them, it my hands will get like all red. And, I probably had close to like 30 maybe, something like that. Like it's happened a lot, but um, thankfully I've never actually had to use the EpiPen. I've always just used like um, Benadryl to get rid of it. So it's never been to a severity that I've actually had to use the EpiPen thankfully, but I always carry it on me with Benadryl as well, just in case. Uh, fully grown adults, if they still carry the allergy, it's a bit more of a tricky situation as I understand it. But with modern day technology, anything's possible really, right? So one of the toughest things about having my allergy is being able to go out and eat just casually with friends or family. Um, I have to be very cautious of what I can eat. I have to make sure I know what exactly is in the food or even not even just going out to restaurants, also in grocery stores. Um, when I'm grocery shopping, I have to make sure I read all the ingredients to every product. 
there are several different uh, supplements out there. That's pretty much the easiest way. Uh, orange juice is infused with calcium nowadays. Kale, for instance, contains almost enough uh, calcium as a glass of milk. Uh, they also have almonds, tofu. Uh, working uh, closely with an allergist uh, or a nutritionist, they'll also point you in uh, the right direction. In the past, like I've obviously visited plenty of allergists over the years, and they, a lot of the times each year I would go and they'd tell me that maybe by the time like I was 16 I would grow out of it, but obviously I'm past 16 now and it's still with me, so I think the chances of me growing out of it are very, very slim. Like I'm probably gonna have the allergy for the rest of my life, but you never know with like technology advancing and stuff. They might come up, doctors might come up with something that could cure, maybe like a pill that I could take to be able to eat the food. So that would be nice, but. Um, so even even if though like I'm I'm like 20 now so I've had it my whole life I'm pretty used to it like whenever I tell people about the allergy they're always like oh like I don't know how you do it like I could never do that but for me it's just like I'm used to it now it doesn't really bother me that much. Jamile is now live in the editing studio to answer some questions about his documentary. So Jamil, how common is Chris's uh, severe allergy to dairy and to egg products? Well to be honest, I'm not too sure about the actual numbers when it actually comes to people that suffer uh, with the anaphylactic allergy regarding dairy and eggs, but overall in the anaphylactic uh, range or area, um, it's about 1 in 50 people. Wow, that's crazy. I honestly, before I've seen your documentary, I honestly never even knew that this was um, an allergy that somebody could actually have. So given, um, I guess, the restrictions of what Chris can eat, how does he actually manage to balance his diet? Well, the funny thing about Chris is he actually kind of eats bad. Um, it's mainly because, yeah, since he has lived with uh, this challenge his whole life, he has gotten used to... Uh, certain restaurants that actually can provide him the food that he does want. So sometimes we may go to McDonald's and he can have, you know, a hamburger, but he just won't get any cheese. And he'll just make sure that, again, the product is able to be eaten by him. Yeah, exactly. I can't even imagine, like, having to, you know, take so much precaution when going to a restaurant. Um, so now my next question, um, how difficult not how difficult. You said, okay, going back to like the McDonald's and everything, you said that like, oh, it's fine, for, like it's easier for him to find food, but like, I mean, aside from like fast food restaurants, I guess you could say like grocery stores and everything, how difficult can it actually be for him to find food products? Well, you got to think about it again. Chris, he's not able to have some of the things that, you know, we take for granted. For example, ice cream, uh, pizzas, uh, tacos, burritos. It all sounds like unhealthy foods, but we still get to enjoy them and Chris he has to look in other places so he go when he is grocery shopping for example he has to look for vegan options so he may be able to get a pizza with vegan cheese instead but again he'll never get the real taste of the food that we have now I do have to ask as a food lover um, do have you ever actually like uh, tasted some of Chris's food that he eats yes actually during the shoot um, I got to have some of the mac and cheese that he had. And to be honest, it was not that great. He had to throw some ketchup in there, even a little bit of salt and pepper, just to, you know, liven it up a little bit. But, man, it tasted like cardboard. Oh, like cardboard, gosh. <laughs> all right, so um, in terms of, like, um, the cooking, does Chris, like, do all the cooking for himself? Or does he have, like, a family members, like mom and dad, who will do it for him? Um, Chris, he lives at home with his family, uh, so yeah, he does have his dad and his stepmom um, there that he does live with, and they make the food for him as well. But of course, he takes care of himself. He's a big boy, uh, so he can he makes he makes and prepares his own food as well. That's great. So um, his allergy obviously must have quite an impact on the people that um, live with him, like on a day-to-day -day basis. Definitely, definitely, it does. That's it great. does all the time because you can't um, have somebody with this allergy, and and it can't just impact him, it has to also impact his family. So I'm sure they are t also taking precautions at home to make sure they aren't contaminating any of his food, just to make sure, you know, Chris can live to see another day. 
Yeah, exactly, because he totally wants him to live. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so in our next documentary, we're going to actually explore the life of Joel O'Reilly's fitness journey and why Joel decides to challenge himself absolutely every day. We were able to see uh, not what, but kind of who motivates Joel for living a healthy lifestyle. It's important to challenge yourself to continually progress as a person. To challenge yourself means to step outside your comfort zone. You, you can't make progress by doing something you've already done. You've already made that progress. If you want to make progress, you have to go out there and venture into new territories and ultimately dominate that territory and make it your own. And that's where the progress is. My name's Joel O'Reilly. I'm 22 years old and I'm a fitness and health connoisseur. I first got involved in fitness when I was a young kid. I was around 13 years old. My grandfather started bringing me into the YMCA with him. And I started training with him there, doing different things, mostly for school athletics. But going to the YMCA introduced me to new people and new styles of training and different ways of challenging myself. I try to challenge myself every day and multiple times a day. In the physical realm, I try to challenge myself by adjusting the intensity of a workout, uh, the length of the workout, or maybe the movements within the workout. I'd definitely say my grandfather motivates me to stay fit and live a healthy lifestyle. And how many of these do you do? Fifteen. Fifteen. He's like a mentor to me. This guy lives and breathes fitness and health, and uh, he seems to be a pretty happy person, so I would definitely say that he credits his... Uh, happiness to that. But when I do visit him, we tend to go down to the condo gym together and we run our own little workouts, but constantly throughout the workout we're checking in on each other and asking how we're doing, what we're doing, why we're doing it. Great form, Paul. Yeah, that's important. Do it all the time. Yeah, that's true. That's the key, right? Consistency. Yeah. Consistency is the key. My grandfather was born in 1944, pushing 74, coming this June and he has Parkinson's disease. And because of that disease, it prevents him from doing the things that he loves to do on a daily basis at the intensity that he wishes he could do them. But he doesn't let it stop him. Ultimately, he still continues to do what he has to do because he loves to do it. And because of that, he inspires me and motivates me to live a healthy lifestyle every single day. Yeah, that's good. I'm really proud of Joel. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. All right, good work out, Paul. Good work out, Joe. All right, you back in it tomorrow? Yeah. I knew you would be. <laughs> My favorite part about the gym is honestly after the workout. I feel great when I finish a workout. I feel relieved. I feel happy that I know I did something that was good for myself physically and mentally. I'm just doing something that I love. And that gives me a sense of peace and relaxation. We now have Katie Gogos live in the editing suite to answer a few questions about her piece. So Katie, for the people that are not exactly 100% um, sure as to what Parkinson's disease is, could you do me a favor and explain a little uh, bit more about it? Sure, Alex. Um, well, Parkinson's is actually quite a mystery. Um, there is no known cause for it. And unfortunately, there's no known cure for it either. Um, but it is a neurological um, disease that you can get. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is this like um, a disease, I guess you would say, that kind of generally um, ranges with older people? Or like, can younger people actually get this disease? It does. Um, it, it's mostly middle-aged to elderly people. Um, it's 
more common then. And the thing that's tough about it is symptoms get worse as it goes on. So they keep getting worse before they get better. And in most cases, they don't really get better at all, unfortunately. Wow, okay, so the symptoms. Um, so basically what Parkinson's is, it uh, consists of like a lot of shaking, correct? Yes, um, so common symptoms um, would be body tremors, loss of um, coordination, impaired coordination and balance, um, stiffness in muscles and slow movements as well. Wow, I can't, I honestly can't even imagine that. I can't imagine, you know, like my grandmother or my own grandfather having that. Um, so I guess, how, how exactly does Tom work out with the tremors? Like, does it help the tremors by working out? Um, yes, it does actually. It, um, working out is really good for anybody. Um, because what it does is it increases your flexibility and your balance and this is what he has problems with. He has problems with his flexibility and his balance and his coordination. So when he works out he's actually helping himself. Um, and we actually got really lucky that day when I went in to go film with them um, because Joel had told me that maybe we wouldn't be able to film for too long, he might get tired or restless or he mm -hmm. might start having tremors or he might not be able to do certain workouts but it turns out that we caught him on a good day and he was able to go through his whole workout routine with us and um, yeah it was pretty amazing to see how he can still do this it's really inspiring yeah that is that's extremely inspiring that's uh, quite phenomenal actually so while you were filming Tom he did or he didn't have any tremors like were there any moments where he even seemed like slightly shaky or uncomfortable um to be honest with you I didn't realize any but um Joel said that he was doing really well and he was really surprised and he hasn't seen him in such good uh shape while working out in quite a while so oh really that's yeah. phen that's phenomenal all right, so I'm just going to kind of dive away from the Parkinson's, and I kind of want to ask you just about how the actual um, process of the filming went. Did you, like, run into any, um, I guess, type of problems other than maybe issues with uh, Tom's grandfather, or sorry, Tom, as he is the grandfather? <laughs> <laughs> Getting confused over here. <laughs> no worries. Um, you know what? Filming was a really great experience for me. Um, we got lucky on the days that we shot outside. It was actually beautiful weather, oh, nicer than it is um, today, <laughs> ironically. <laughs> um, but um, we didn't have too many problems. Like I said, we also got lucky with when we were shooting with Tom and he was having a great day. So we were able to get a lot of footage with him. And I had really great conversations with him, learning more about Parkinson's and how he deals with it. Um, and it was really great to be in the gym with Joel and Tom to see how they bond together. Um, just like their relationship as a whole is really special and like really important and um, it's just great to be around that and see it. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's really good. I feel like it's really good that um, Tom has that um, support system with them as well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I've got one last question, I swear. It's the last one. Don't hate me. So what are um, the workout routines like between Tom and Joel? Like does... Is Tom able to like keep up with Joel? Does he struggle kind of? Or does Joel kind of go more at Tom's pace? How does it work out? Right. That's a great question actually. Um, they don't really have a set routine um, because they always bounce back and forth from things. So for example, one day they'll do legs, one day they'll do upper body like back and arms, the next day they'll do core and cardio, stuff like that. Um, and they're both pretty much like almost at the same fitness level it seems like. Tom is incredibly fit and able to do these things that I can't even do, you know what I mean? Um, so in terms of, of um, one of them like not keeping up to the other, uh, they make sure that that doesn't happen. So they're always making sure that they're on the same page and they're checking in on each other and making sure um, that one of them isn't going too fast, or like if they need to stop and have some water or take a break, then they do that, and they're really good with that. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Katie. I really appreciate it. Your story and your interview has definitely opened my eyes, and I bet other people's eyes as well, to uh, living with Parkinson's disease. <laughs>
features a gym called Apex. It's an urban CrossFit community gym that's all about working towards each other's goals. Here's Apex. For me, being a personal trainer and strength coach is, is probably the perfect job. I don't like to be tied down to a certain schedule. I like that each day is different. I like um, dealing with people. I like helping people with something that I really believe in. Myself and all the trainers here, we just want to help people because this is something that was very uh, influential in our lives and kind of set us on a different path. And if we could give that back to people, then we, we've done our job. My name is Matthew Pasquale. I'm the uh, head strength and conditioning coach and owner of Apex Training Center. Basically, me and my brother had this idea um, a long time ago that we wanted to eventually open a gym. He plays professional hockey and I was training clients on the side and I just needed uh, some time to get enough clients to, to make the jump to having my own gym and then in September of 2015, that was when it made most sense. Apex is a community of people who are passionate about strength training. Um, we have a combination of athletes, competitive athletes, um, general population people and people who are just starting out to lift so it's kind of like a collective group of people who just want to get better um, through the act of strength training. So I actually came from a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu background and what got me into strength training was I was actually a fairly weak kid and I would always when I was training I would always be getting out muscled by guys who are older and stronger than me so that really pushed me to get stronger and, and, and with my first coach uh, Josh Hewitt, he was the person who kind of changed my life and I decided to go to school for kinesiology and go down the path of training other clients because I just wanted to do what he did for me, um, which was not only get me stronger, but kind of like turn me into a different person, right? Somebody who was more confident, somebody who, you know, would walk into a room and stand up straight. Just little things like that, which go a long way. People don't actually think that strength training could help you with, but it, it just changed who I am as a person from the inside out. And, also seeing the results on the mat when I was training, it, it changed my whole jiu-jitsu game, right? So I think the misconceptions come from uh, mainly women who think that if they're gonna lift weights that they're gonna get bulky. And then there's probably some athletes out there that think if they strength train that they might get slower, which none of that is really true. That's not, that hasn't been proven. Um, there's a lot of females who, who used to train at other gyms doing like circuit and cardio type classes. And when they come here and they start to strength train and start to feel themselves getting stronger, um, not only in the gym, but also in their regular life and then see the physical changes, they're hooked. So I think that um, strength training and also strength and conditioning is just something that makes you better as a person. And also coming and lifting with your friends and kind of like making friends at the gym, that's what keeps people um, uh, motivated to come back. Weight training and strength and conditioning in general, um, it, it will turn you into a more confident person, especially if you come in the gym and you need to lose a little bit of weight or you kind of feel weak out in the world. I think just the act of getting stronger, um, creating the body that you have in your mind, that could change your life tenfold, right? You see a lot of people that come in and say they, they're 10 or 15 pounds overweight and next thing you know, they're hitting PRs, they're leaner, they're more fit, they can walk up a flight of stairs and they're out of breath. So all those little things go a long way and you see them just turn into a different person. You know, they walk in the gym now, they're smiling, they're more energetic, they have uh, better relationships. And uh, you know, it's happened a bunch of times in my life with people that I've coached and we're just trying to continue that just come into the gym and lift. Um, the way we've set up the gym here is I don't lock anybody into long-term contracts. If you don't want to be here, then you're fo fully free to leave. We just want people who want to join our community and kind of build upon what we're trying to achieve, which is just create a, a community of people who are just trying to better themselves through the act of strength and conditioning. Yeah. Apex looks 
like an absolutely amazing gym, but unfortunately not everyone has the time or the confidence to go to a public gym and I can personally totally relate to that. As a college student, it's definitely hard for me to um, get to the gym and get the confidence to go to the gym. Now thankfully, today we have Rhiannon Hamilton here and she's here to teach us some simple at-home workouts for beginners. Hey Rhiannon. Hey, thanks for having me. No, okay. no problem. Today Show me we're your going to start with some stretches, awesome. which okay. is always good to start with. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm going to spread our arms. Okay. Star yeah. shape. Star shape. De yeah. So we're going okay. to touch our opposite hands, so our opposite oh, Okay. So straight back and yep. straight legs. Straight everything. Oh, you Stand can feel up. the burn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that stretch. Next. Oh yeah, okay. Let's go again. Yep. One more round. You feel it? Oh yeah, I feel it. Okay. Another one of my favorite stretches is to like wrap that? your hand. Okay. Yep. Yep. Touch the shoulder. Yep. And, and bring... touch the elbow. Oh. And then, then you the pull. Mm -hmm. Ooh, mm -hmm. that feels good over mm -hmm. here. Exactly. Yep. I feel that. Okay. Let's switch hands. Okay, definitely. Mm -hmm. So back here. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. You got and then it. I'm pulling. And a you're pulling. slight little tug. Slight tug. Don't pull too much. You that might feels pull really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With my luck, I you totally pull something. <laughs> I can feel mm -hmm. that there. That feels really good. Feels good. Yeah, very good. Okay. Want to do one more stretch? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. I need. I definitely need to stretch. <laughs> Just pull your knees here. Pull my knees up like that. Yeah. It can be very fast. Oh, oh, okay. And am I keeping my so your back elbows? straight? As straight as you can. As straight. Okay, thank you. I'm a <laughs> beginner. Cut me some slack. <laughs> your elbows touch okay. your knees. Opposite knees. Like that. Yeah. Yep. One more time. Okay. Close Let's do some little workouts. All so right, we're going to cool. start with these 2.5 Ooh, Okay. We're just going to do some curls. Awesome. So when you do it, you yeah. it, you're going to go up. Okay. Feel? I can really, you can, you can feel mm -hmm. it here. You can definitely feel it here. I'm definitely feeling a pull. Switch. Wow. Keep it even. You okay, yeah, it? yeah, no, I feel Third it. Time? Yeah. Make sure you keep that breathing. Yep. One more time. You know, that feels really good. Now, would mm -hmm. you say that this is like, um, I guess some exercises that you could do if you're like a, a beginner trying to lose um, fat on your arms? Cause like, I know I've got to like, you know, start losing some fat on the yeah. arms and I don't want to build muscle necessarily. I want to lose the fat. So is that something that I so, could work on at home? Yeah. So for okay. toning, yeah. light weights are really good. Okay, true. Building muscle, it's easier to use heavier weights. Gotcha, gotcha. I think also if you're new to it, yes. it's easier yes. to use lighter weights to start oh. with and okay. get heavier as you go, so you don't pull anything. Exactly, yeah. It's oh yeah, because then you're sore after and that gets discouraging. <laughs> okay, All right. we're gonna move to lunges. Awesome, okay. I'm gonna take this foot. Left foot? Yeah. And, okay. You're just gonna keep your back straight. Okay, gotcha. Okay? Yeah. As we bend. Bend? Mm -hmm. So oh, okay. the thing about lunges is that you keep your knee, don't let your knee go over your toes. Knee don't go over toes. Gotcha. And you make sure there's a bunch of 90 degree angles going on. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I get. Yep. Let's do one. Ready? Yeah. Go for it. Another one? Yeah. Let's do the next feet. Awesome. If I I can really don't feel it um the back of the leg. Mm -hmm. That's where you're supposed to feel it. That's where you're supposed to feel it. Awesome. Okay. Also, don't forget to always face forward when you do it. Gotcha. That's how you keep it. Yeah. Ready? Let's go. There you go. Awesome. One more? Yep. Wow. Oh. You can really feel the pull. You feel it? So is that a way that I could also uh, start to lose like fat on the legs as well? Uh -huh. Legs, thighs. Awesome. should feel it up here too sometimes. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I can definitely mm -hmm. feel it up there. Okay. <laughs> so next we're going to do some squats. Okay, okay? awesome. So we're going to take the kettlebell. Oh. And hold it. Awesome. Thank you. So when I do squats, I keep my toes in line with my shoulders. Okay, yep. And when I bend, I bring my hands up, which is why you're holding the mat. Oh, okay, ball. gotcha, yep. It will help you yeah, work that out your sense. arms as you do squats. That definitely makes sense. Squats work out your butt. Exactly, you're gonna get some butt going on. So you have to remember to always sit yep. into your butt. Okay. While trying to keep your back as straight as possible. Yeah, exactly. Which is hard during a squat. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so as you bend, ready? Okay. You make sure that your knees do not pass your toes. Gotcha. So let's try that, ready? Yep. And up. Yep. And again, and up, one more time, and up. Awesome. Like that. I feel good. You feel it? I can, I can feel the butt coming along. 
<laughs> All right, so some simple, um, I guess, exercises to like uh, warm down yourself. After down. you've been like working out a lot, something you could do to uh, tone it down. Just tone it down. Tone it down. Cool yourself off. <laughs> okay. Yeah. My favorite workout for your arms to start yeah. is probably just a simple stretch. Gotcha. It's just across. It's very Oh, light. yes, okay. You good? Yep. It kind of just calms everything down. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, because, yeah, I, I mean, I, my little sister, like, you know, she goes and she works out a lot, and she always says, like, oh, sometimes she, she's still kind of hurting yeah, she, when she, she gets home. Sore. Or, exactly. Shoulder rolls exactly. always help the shoulders. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's the best one. All right, everyone watching at home, shoulder rolls. Shoulder rolls. Do those shoulder rolls. <laughs> to wind kind of down, I like to go down to my toes. Okay, gotcha. So people just hang. You can feel all yeah. the way here. Yeah, you can. stretches your leg. Definitely. I can mm -hmm. definitely feel it. Let's go up. Awesome. One that I like that's always just good for your body. Mm -hmm. Twist. Twist? Oh. That, it kind of helps your back. My twist. Oh, you're just twisting up here. Just up here. Ooh. Just the core. Okay. And then okay. if you really want to get really extreme, you can do the baseball bat, awesome. which is my favorite. Awesome. You go down. All right. Well, unfortunately, girl, that is all the time we have for today. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on our show. Thank you for having um, me. I definitely hope that everybody was able to uh, take some amazing tips from this. Thanks for watching. See you next time on The Journal.